This tutorial is an introduction to Blender FDS. We create a simulation setup in which we highlight the formation of a common vortex street around a cylinder by using massless particles. Hi, Tristan here, so let's get started. Having started Blender, we can either click General or somewhere in the free space. At first I will activate my screencast keys so that you can see here on the left hand side if I click any button. I select everything by hitting A and hit X to delete it. Now adding a cube with shift A, mesh cube, which will become our domain. With F2 we can give it a new name, domain, and hitting M we can move the object into a new collection to keep everything organized. Move to new collection and this we call also domain. I would now like to adjust the size of our domain. The object is selected, clicking on item on the right, we get an overview over the location, rotation, scale and dimensions of our object. Along the y-axis the domain should have a length of 4 meter, in x and z it should have a length of about 1.4 meters. The size can be adjusted for instance by scaling the object, hitting S for scale, if I move the mouse the object scales equally in all axes. Hitting Y we can restrict the scaling only to the Y axis and if we then go to the number key for instance and hit 2 we get a factor of 2 for the scaling, click with the mouse and now the object is scaled by a factor of 2 along the Y axis which leads to 4 meters of length. It is important to note however that Blender works with multiple coordinate systems at once. There is a global coordinate system which is the coordinate system of the world and then every individual object has its own coordinate system. An easy way to visualize the different coordinate systems is moving from object mode where we are in right now to edit mode. We can also hit tab to go there. Under the selection settings we go to face select and select this face on the right hand side. In the local coordinate system we see that the position is at 1 meter along the y-axis but in the global coordinate system we are at 2 meters and this is the factor coming from, if we go back to object mode, the scale here. If you hit 3 for instance and would go back into edit mode we see here global is now 3 meter while the local is still at 1. Changing the scale back to 2 again. We can now align the two different coordinate systems by hitting Control A to open the apply menu then apply the scale. We see then that the scale is here normalized again back to 1. Going into edit mode local and global are now the same. I also like to keep it here at the global setting. If we scale the object within the edit mode we do not need to align the coordinate systems. So for instance select everything, hitting S to scale, now we would like to go to 70%, 0.7, but we would only like it to constrain to the X and Z axis so therefore we can hit X and then shift Y and it will only constrain to the X and Z. So when we now look at the position of the top face we see that it is in Z 0.7 in the global and local coordinate systems. Going back to edit mode the X and the Z dimensions are 1.4 meters and all the scales are at 1. The size is fine now so let's transform the object into an FDS fluid mesh. Here on the right hand side over the object properties we can choose the name list which should be mesh. With these fields here we can set the IJK subdivisions along each axis to set up the cell size. I would like to have 2 cm cells so therefore I set a subdivision of 70 along the X axis, 200 along the Y axis and 70 on the Z axis. On the top left we get also an indication about the cell size in each direction and the total number of cells within the grid as well as the aspect ratio of the individual cells. Now I would like to add the cylinder. It is important to understand that new objects are always introduced at the location of a 3D cursor which is this thing here. There's different ways to change the position of the 3D cursor, for instance holding shift and right click somewhere, shift and S to open the pie menu and then you could maybe move the cursor back to the word origin, or on the right hand side on the tabs on the view 3D cursor you can put in manual values for the location of the 3D cursor. If you find that left clicking changes the position of the 3D cursor and you can't select objects you can go to edit, preferences, key map and then switch from right click to left click select. So let's reset the cursor to the word origin, shift S and then cursor to word origin. I would like the cylinder to be located 1 meter to the left so that I have 1 meter in which the flow field can form and then 3 meters in which the vortices can form. In the menu on the right hand side I change the Y location to minus 1 meter. With shift A I'm adding a new mesh which will be the cylinder. In the bottom left a new menu pops up in which I can change how many sides my cylinder is supposed to have. I would like to have 24. Then I can change the radius of this cylinder which I would like to have 7 centimeters. 
and I can change the length of the cylinder which I would like to be 1.4 meters. As long as I don't click somewhere else this menu will stay and I can make adjustments to the object. The moment I click somewhere else the object will be realized and I can't change it anymore. See the menu disappeared. The cylinder should be rotated 90 degrees along the y-axis so select the cylinder tap into edit mode, A to select everything, R for rotate, Y to constrain to the Y axis and then type in 90, hit enter to rotate it into a horizontal position like this. Alright, now export the scene to see how it looks like in FTS so far. At first we can give the scene a new name here up top for instance and we call it Carmen Vortex Street underscore 01 and on the right hand side on the tabs we have scene properties in which we now see that the character ID is changed to KVS underscore 01 that we put up here we could change it to 2. We see that it changes here as well so maybe we can also change that. Here on the FDS time we could set start and end time let's say 10 seconds and now we can export the file hitting file export nist fds we can create a new folder here let's call it kvs underscore zero one go in there and export the fds file so i stopped the simulation right after the beginning because you just want to see how it looks like in smoke view so the box is in here we see that the grid has a uniform resolution just the cylinder is not a cylinder but a box. Okay, but we wanted to have the cylinder as a geom object. To change that, we select the cylinder, go to the object properties, under the name list we change from obstruction to geom. Exporting the file again, and when we try to run that, we see that there's a problem with the geom cylinder with the surfaces. The reason is that we now need to assign a material to the object. For that, we select the object, go here to the material properties, and here we can select in the drop down menu a material, for instance the inert material. That part may be slightly confusing here because what is considered in FDS to be a surface in Blender is considered to be a material. So therefore you need to go to the materials tab in Blender to set the surface in FDS. Export and try again. Okay this seems to work now. Let's check the smoke view and here we have a round cylinder. The sides do not look very nice, but that is primarily related to the render engine in smoke view. We can make it a little bit better manually, but uh, there's not so much we can do about it. So first off, let's change the shading issues here at the end caps. Going to the cylinder, into edit mode. We can focus the view on the object with using the numpad period key. With the selection of face select, we select the end cap, right click and then poke faces. So with that we have a center vertex and a relatively even distribution of faces around it. We do the same on the other side and that should make it look a little bit better. Next thing is that we would like to have a different color so we can create a new material here when we go on the right hand side in the materials tab hitting the small plus on the right that creates a new material. Clicking here on new to initialize it give it a name maybe cylinder and basically what we would like to have is the same material definition that we have in inert but with a different color. So we can click on inert here on this small arrow copy the material go to the cylinder to the small arrow paste the material and now on the RGB button we can change the color to maybe some gray maybe like this. To remove the inert material we select it and click on the minus sign. Now I would like to add a vent on the left hand side to introduce a gas flow into the domain and open up the right hand side so that the gas can exit. To introduce the vent we can either add a new object maybe a plane for instance or an easier way would be to select the boundary or the domain. Go into edit mode select the face, shift D to duplicate the face. If we move it around and right click it snaps back to the original position. Hit P to separate and hit selection. We see here in the outliner that we have now two objects. One is the original domain and one is the new object which is just the copy of the face. Let's rename it to inlet and move it into a different collection, just the original collection. On the object properties tab we can now change the name list from mesh to vent. Where is it here? And as the location instead of bounding box we can choose faces. Since we are introducing more and more objects into our scene it may be helpful to lock the domain so that we do not accidentally click and move it. In the outliner we can select different filters. Here the restriction toggles for selectable and on the domain collection we just click on the arrow. So with that we cannot select the domain anymore but the other objects. You are still able to make changes to the domain for instance if you wanted to change the number of cells you can just click in the outliner here to select it and then change the cell size but you cannot click it here. So let's create a new material for the vent to introduce the gas flow. Selecting the vent, materials again, add a new material. This material we call inlet. 
Now we need to add some information about the gas flow. For that we use the other parameters. With the plus we add a new item, double click and then we write velocity equals minus 0.04 meters per second. Click somewhere else and this parameter will then be written into the FDS input file to the definition of that surface. To open up the right hand side of the boundary we could use a vent with the y max parameter and that can be added in the text part here. We can remove the two definitions for the boundaries and add in a new vent. Information that is provided in this text file here will be written as is into the FDS input file. Now let's have a look at it again in smoke view. So the vent on the left hand side introduces our gas flow, the right hand side of the domain is open and the cylinder has a nicer shading at the end caps. Let's add a slice file to the domain. In general we could do the same process as we did with the vent and decouple one of the faces from the domain, but now I would like to go the other way and add a plane and make that the slice. So shift A to add a new object, a plane. We go into edit mode, select everything, rotate along the y axis 90 degrees. So it would be nice to have the plane fit into the domain. We can achieve that by going to the selection mode to edges and we can activate the snapping here with this magnet. The snapping type we change to vertex. Now when we select this edge and hit G for grab to move it around. If we move the mouse cursor over a vertex position it will snap to that position here. You see this also with a small yellow circle. If we hit Y to constrain it to the Y axis it will be located at this position here at the center and at the position of the vertex. Same things for the top and the bottom. Selecting the edge, G to move it, constrain to the Z axis and then select the vertex, the bottom, G, Z, select the vertex and here the end, G, Y, vertex. And now it fits perfectly into our domain. We leave the edit mode, rename that thing to velocity and move it into a new collection. Make a new collection which we call SLCF. So to transform this plane into a slice we go again to the objects properties, under the name list we select slice and for the quantity we type in velocity. To not clutter up the whole scene we can go to the outliner and for the slice collection hit the eyeball icon to hide everything within this collection. Let's set up the particles. I would like to have them introduced from two init volumes that are located right upstream of the cylinder. We set up one of these volumes first to make sure that everything works. It can then just be copied. To define the init volumes I will just add a cube and I would like to have it located at the position of the cylinder. In case your 3D cursor is not located at the origin of the cylinder anymore, you can just click on the cylinder, hit Shift S to open the Pi menu and move the cursor to selected at the bottom. Then you should see that the 3D cursor is located around the yellow point which is the origin of the object. With Shift A we add a cube and set its size to the cell size of 2 cm. Let's rename it to something like particle spawn. Now let's change the view that we are looking directly down the x-axis. Right now we are in the perspective view. With the number keys on the numpad the views can be changed. With numpad 7 we are looking directly down the z-axis. We also notice that the view has changed from perspective to autographic. Also there is an indication what the distance between the major grid lines is, in this case 10 cm. With numpad 1 we are looking directly down the y axis and with numpad 3 directly down the x axis. Let's zoom in a little. Now we want to move the cube to the left along the y axis. G, y minus 0.08. Now it's located directly in front of the cylinder, but to fit into the grid we need to move it 1 cm to the left and 1 cm up. Rotating the view will automatically put it back into perspective mode. Right now that volume is located directly at the border of two cells, but I would like to have it span two cells. Therefore we just go into edit mode and scale it along the x-axis by a factor of 2. And we leave the edit mode again. Now under the object properties we can change the name list to init. The particle definition can just be written into the text file at the bottom. I gave the particles the ID tracers, set them to massless true and put a sampling factor of 0.1. To connect the particles to the init volume we select it and go to the object properties. We add a new parameter and type in part underscore ID tracers. To define the number of particles to be spawned we add in a new parameter. We type in n underscore particles and set it to 100. Now export it and try it out in FDS. Let's load the particles and have a look. It seems that the cut cell method has difficulties representing this strong curvature in this poor resolution. Higher fluid cell resolution should lead to a better result here. However, to keep the simulation manageable, I will just move the init volume one cell up. So select the volume, hit G, Z and 0.02. Now let's try it again. That looks much better. It would be nice if we could have a continuous stream of particles. This can be achieved by introducing particles periodically. For this we add a new parameter to the init volume which is called dt underscore insert. There we can define after how many seconds a new load of particles is introduced. I set it here to 0.33 seconds. So export and try again. And here we have a continuous stream of particles.
Now all that's left is to copy this volume and move it four cells down. Then we can add another particle definition and give both of them a different color, for instance blue and red. First I copy the particle definitions and give them the names tracers blue and tracers red. The colors will be changed by using the RGB parameter. I hit Shift D to duplicate the object and hit immediately Z to constrain the movement to the y-axis without clicking anywhere. Typing in minus 0.06, I copy the volume to the lower side. Now I can rename the lower one to particle spawn red and the upper one to particle spawn blue. Now also the particle IDs in the init volume definitions need to be adjusted. Tracers blue for the particle spawn blue and tracers red for particle spawn red. Again export and see how it looks. And there we have it. Now you could play a little bit with the simulation. Just to give you a few ideas, you could maybe increase the resolution of the simulation, you could adjust the color of the particles, the location of where the particles are inserted, the diameter of the cylinder and so on. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you and now you have some fun playing around with the simulation. I wish you a nice day.